All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our first panel for the conference. Excited for this one. The very first question is, how many genders are there? And so I'll leave it up to the speakers to get the ball rolling. Thanks so much, all of you, for being here. The floor is all yours. All right, hey, do you want to start? Sure, I'll start. Um, there are two genders. It's a good place to start. What about you, Kijam? Uh, yeah, so I think really the debate uh, is more about the word gender. And language is ambiguous. People can use words in any way that they is useful and they were brought up using. So I think really the topic is that some a large portion of the community was brought up using the term gender to refer synonymously with sex. So there would be two. Um, and there's this new movement within the feminist liberal movement where the genders refer to a psychological state or an identity of some kind, which then broadens the word to a significantly more number of genders. And really, no, nobody cares. Like, that's fine. Like, if, if you want to use gender in a multitude, that's fine. But if you try to condemn other people for using it in a way like Cake did, where there's just two, that's really the problem. The problem is when you are condemning people because they're using the word in the way they were brought up using it, which is completely legitimate usage of the word. If in their community they use the word to mean two, then that is the correct usage in that community, and you demonizing people for using that usage is completely wrong. Like, simply, you can prove this isn't an inherently uh, transphobic or sexist labeling of gender by saying it's just two, because if you just imagine if there was a group of people in a country who never heard of these other uh, usage of gender and used it exclusively to be synonymous with sex, and they used it to mean just two, and then someone who identified with a new gender came into their community and they continued to use gender in the two-way thing, would they be racist or sexist? No, I mean, clearly not. They just never knew about it. This is just how they brought up, use, were using the term. So clearly, it is not the case that the using gender to mean two things is either incorrect or in any way bigoted towards the other group, and I think that's really the topic that matters here. All righty. Um, well, I guess to talk about how many genders there can be, we have to talk about the origin of gender. My understanding of it is that uh, early humans were only able to uh, observe very few differences between the human sexes, and most of them were on a very surface level. If you were like an ancient, uh, I don't know, like a hominid living out in the, the prairies, right, you ancient human or something, most likely the vast majority of your life, when you saw a new human being born, you were going to see humans being born with you know, certain genitals and humans being born with other genitals. And from there, I think, as we sort of develop society from a very, very early age in our civilization, um, we sort of built that conception of two different genders, two different um, things that you can identify as that inform how you behave in society and the role that you play. Uh, and that's just sort of been how we've done it for a very long time. Nowadays, our understanding of biological sex is very, very different. We've got a, lot, a much wider understanding of it. There's a lot more to it than just you know, genitals and whatnot. So the vast majority of the academic community on, in the world right now seems to agree that a distinction between gender and biological sex is important. And when you think about gender as being a socially constructed phenomenon, then technically there is no limit to how many genders there could be. If a certain group or a certain social space recognizes there as being five genders, then sure, there can be five genders for them if they recognize it that way. If you consider it a socially constructed idea, then whether or not a certain society or social space recognizes it is what makes it true or makes it valid. Why don't you go, Dylan? So I think widely, if you look at society, for the longest time, uh, and I would still say this is true in, in many circles, that people see sex and gender as synonymous. They really mean the same thing. A boy is a boy, a girl is a girl. Um, this is uh, because many of our discussions about uh, society and like gender specifically have always been very surface level. And uh, we never really engage in casual conversation about the complexity of like gender norms and what is a man and what isn't a man, what is a woman, what isn't a woman, and what societal standards make a man a man and a woman a woman. Uh, so I don't believe, and I agree with Tijam in the way that if somebody was to say, yeah, a man's a man's a woman's a woman, I don't think that makes them like racist or, or sexist or evil. I think that just is how our society has functioned and how we have talked about these things. And it is something that is uh, built into people from birth because that's how we talk about gender in media. That's how we talk about gender and, and, and popular culture. And it's if, if you're in your 60s and 70s, sitting your grandmother down and having a complex uh, discussion about neo-pronouns is not going to be the most pleasant experience in the world, I'm going to be honest. 
So, I, I, but if we do have this discussion, I agree largely with Xander Hall in the idea that there is a distinct difference between gender and sex. If we're talking about sex, I do believe there is two sexes, of course, that excludes people who are intersex, of course. And then there is gender, where it, which is societally constructed. Now, uh, Xander Hall was talking a little bit about how in, in olden times, you know, people talked about gender and sex because they could only see certain uh, very surface level features in people. But there have been multiple societies in history where gender was not confined in just to uh, men and women. There's been societies across the Asian subcontinent and the African subcontinent where there were things that are widely now considered by archaeologists to be considered third, fourth, fifth genders uh, because these people served different societal and what you would say gender roles if you're using modern terms. Um, that we would see in the modern age, as th these are people who are, are third, fourth, and fifth genders. So I would agree largely with Xander Hall on the idea that gender is largely socially constructed. And so when you ask a question like how many genders there are, it would largely depend upon the societal standards of the time and the discussion around gender in, in each society. And so it could actually be, um, like, while it could have an infinite amount of possibilities, you could actually have different answers depending on the culture you're, you're participating in. Um, the, the only times that I noticed that you guys brought up the possibility of evil is with more traditional people who say, no, there's only two genders, but there's a, there's a I guess that could be considered evil if somebody's being malicious about it or something. What do you mean evil? Because somebody, be, people brought up uh, transphobic, sexist, racist, mm -hmm. or evil. That's what I mean by oh, okay. what you guys are talking about with evil. Well, what, uh, what does transphobia mean to you? But I'm not done yet. Okay, I'll um, the other, the other evil that, there's, that you guys haven't mentioned is supporting people's delusions. Part of love is loving the truth and um, supporting truth. People have a right to think or believe or feel what they feel. You can't, you can't stop them from, from feeling or thinking what they're thinking. But you don't, that doesn't mean you're supposed to support them in their, in their wrong. Yeah, it, um, it doesn't really seem like most academic and medical and psychological institutions in the world right now recognize being trans as a delusion. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, I don't support those, those institutions because they are pretty subverted and just divorced from reality because the more intellectual you are, the more you can rationalize the evil and, and go into the, this gray area go outside of people's area of areas of expertise and make claims that there are multiple, gen multiple different genders more beyond the two. But in reality, you just stick with what's simple and then you can have more clarity. Whereas those people support people in their delusions and these people end up m more miserable as a result. Um, if you don't support large academic in institutions be because you think they can rationalize certain bad ideas, who do you get your information from? Who do you trust? Um, I trust what I see around me and my common sense. Okay. Those people um, do have, they can present some facts that you didn't know about, for example. Like, I mean, I didn't really know that much except for in school about intersex or hermaphrodites and stuff like that. And so you can learn stuff from them, but you don't support where they go outside and where they start to draw conclusions. And make could, judgments. could you give me some examples of things that you think either transgender supporting people or trans people broadly do in our society that you think is harmful or um, is delusional? Well, they push it on they push it on children for sure. Mm -hmm. They push it in education. They push it in the mainstream, and so they're pushing a, a shamelessness and an and a like a female minded oh, let's support this, let's feel sorry for them, they're bullied and all that stuff, where you just need to stop, give them basic rights, which is what we all have, our basic rights, but not go further than that, and not pander and cater to them. 
I think that for the most part, the fight of the trans community isn't so much for rights that are not unique to them, but more so for broader societal acceptance and recogni uh, like recognition, right? So for example, if you want to, um, you drew a comparison between transphobia and racism before you listed them. Um, I don't think that, uh, for example, transphobia and racism are very comparable because the things, the types of societal pressures that the trans community is trying to push on broader society, the things they're trying to change are very, are, are somewhat different than what like um, POC in this country are trying to achieve. So I don't think like it's necessarily that comparable, but what, what is your understanding of transphobia? I'm curious. Well, first of all, there's no such thing as racism or transphobia. There is people who don't understand what's going on or don't, um, don't support what people are doing. And that's frequently called racist or transphobic. But, um, and there is a, um, a shock that happens frequently where people are dating or, or at a club or whatever and they find out that they're not dealing with what they thought they were dealing with and there's a vicious reaction sometimes. And that's wrong, but it's not transphobic. That's, that's a new word to, to um, add, add evil upon something that you can already describe as evil. The assault is evil, the hatred is evil. You don't need to add some, some new word to it. It feels like the ascribing the term transphobic to an action to you seems like a moral judgment rather than a, um, a utilitarian categorization of a behavior in order to help like, you know, understand the way people behave and how they think. Wait, could you explain that more? What do you mean by that? When you say that, uh, call, when someone on the left calls someone transphobic, you're saying that that is a moral condemnation, a moral statement of somebody. At least in my case, when I say somebody is transphobic, I use it more as like a, a useful umbrella term to refer to somebody who holds a certain set of ideas. Usually if I say someone's transphobic, you can generally guess a bunch of their ideas. They probably think there aren't more than two genders. They probably think that like trans people are, you know, not valid as their identity that they identify with. Like generally you get a pretty decent rundown of what their points may be. I, do you disagree with the utility of that label? No, I, under, I understand that. Um... I can understand that as being a, a useful term, I guess, but it also carries with it a, um, a moral condemnation. Sure, yeah. yeah. I mean, generally, yeah, on the left, people think lesser of those they view to be transphobic. I guess um, I'll, I'll let you go, Dylan, because I have been talking for a hot minute, but um, I guess the final question that I had is, so you said before that your, one of your biggest problems with the LGBT and trans community in particular is that they're pushing it on kids in, in, in education. Yeah. And I brought up before that pretty much every single academic institution um, in the world validates trans people's identities and the existence of uh, gender dysphoria and how you deal with that and yada yada yada. We could go on for a while. I guess gender the question dysphoria, is there. Is that different from delusion? Gender dysphoria is a mental condition that the overwhelming majority of the scientific community through uh, studies and um, through like long-term analysis of certain patients has come to the conclusion that allowing to transition and recognizing trans people and their identities as valid massively improves their mental state from massive drops in suicidal ideation to self-harm to just generally uh, a higher improvement in quality of life. In the short term, but is it it's still in a delusion? In the long term, in the long term. I don't buy that. <laughs> is it still a delusion though? What, what do you mean by delusion? What's delusion mean? A delusion is you're believing something that's not true. How do you know it's true? Uh, is it a delusion? Why, well, I, I guess I'm asking you, how do you know what's real and what's true? I'm not, I'm not going into that. What, <laughs> what is, is it a delusion? Um, no, I don't think so. But you just admitted that it's gender dysphoria, meaning mm -hmm. they're believing something about them, and, and supporting that delusion is helpful for them supposedly in the long term, according to you and according to the academics, mm -hmm. but, but I don't buy that. Well, um, Mark, if I may, uh, it seems like gender dysphoria is a dissociation between you and what society labels you as, which wouldn't classify as a delusion. It's not a factually inaccuracy there. It's saying that society gives you this label and you don't identify with that label. So I don't really think that would necessarily count as a delusion simply by virtue of its word. But it's I, also a bio, biological reality. Well, I don't. I don't think that most trans people think that they weren't like assigned a different gender at birth or born a different sex. I don't think most trans people are like have like convinced themselves that they that they aren't trans or something. I think they know. I don't think it's like 
there's some sort of mental block going on. Have you heard about the people having these troubles and these attacks upon them when they're detransitioning? Mm -hmm. um, detransitioners are like a very niche subject. Basically, like every detransitioner that ends up having any amount of public notoriety ends up having like a Russia Today documentary done on them. So it, it, the detransitioning thing, especially as our like medical uh, processes for dealing with gender dysphoria and identity have gotten better, has gotten a lot more rare. As for like, I don't want anybody who's detransitioning to be assaulted. I don't think that's something that I stand for, or the broader left stands for at all. Okay, so I wanted to kind of circle back on that racism thing you said earlier. Um, you said that racism doesn't exist? Right. So how? Because you can, because nobody actually hates anybody just because they are a different race. I mean, you, what you can, what you can, people nobody do have a, say. people do have a natural preference, or people do have a developed preference based on experiences, but it's always based on something else, not so, specifically because of, because of, because they're white. People don't hate people because they're white. So when the Klan, you know, go out and they lynch somebody, say, post-Confederacy or, right. or during the Civil Rights era, they weren't doing that because they were racist, they did that because they were, what? Biased? I don't know if it was the Klan specifically that was doing that, but well, no, whites, were, whites, whites were else. doing that. Yeah. Whites were doing that, and some blacks were lynching people as well, and whites were lynching whites as well. It was usually seen as, these were two different communities, and when an outside community allegedly does a rape or a, a robbery or a, or a murder, the men of the town, there weren't many cops around, the mm -hmm. men of the town took it upon themselves to clamp down hard on that outsider community to, you could say it as a form of terrorism, to, because it's a political act in addition to a, a um, bring, the la bring the law down on them. Mm -hmm. So it was, Rather than, it's kind of like when illegals come in and do a DUI and kill somebody. It's seen as an extra insult on injury. So that's why they would uh, commit the lynching. So when I think of the members of the Klan who, who most certainly did lynch people for any number of reasons, they lynched people because they thought this black person shouldn't be in their all white neighborhood. They've lynched people because they uh, believe that they did a crime or they were with a white person. That was something they also did not like, interracial relationships of right. sorts. And so they would go out and lynch them. And the reasons they would lynch these black people is because they thought the black people were lesser than and they shouldn't be in the white community. They should not be with the white woman or, the, or, or in some rare instances, the white man. They should not be around them because black people were, were less than white people in the interpretation of the Klan, which is just by dictionary definition racist. So how would those not be racist acts? Well, at that point, if you're thinking about somebody being less than, if you're claiming that one race is less than, that's how everybody thinks. Everybody, everybody no. feels that they are greater than. That might than. just be projection. Mm -mm. No, in, in general, people, if, if you're angry at somebody, you are feeling superior to them. Do you think black people are less than white people? No. Alexander Hall, do you believe that? Not particularly. I think that just might be you. No, I'm not saying that. I never said that. I'm saying people generally feel great, feel superior to every other, everybody else. Well, yes, but not based upon racial terms. The Klan believed it, that upon racial terms. There's a difference there, and that's what makes it racist. If I believe that was better than Alexander Hall because I have better hair, that's just fact. But the difference between me believing I was better than, say, a, a black person would be I am believing that based upon race, which makes it racist. I don't buy that they all felt that they were better than. Well, maybe not they all were, of them, but the problem is But the, the even, though, even the so-called people who you would call racist, uh -huh. a lot of people just don't, they wanted that separation enforced. They don't, yeah. most yes, people, but why do they want the separation most people, enforced? Because, they, because as, a, as a way of keeping the peace and keeping well, Why did they think it would destroy the peace for black people and white people to be together? Well, look at the results today. We don't really exactly have peace today. I was, I was born and raised in Prince George's County. I, I know white people and black people can live together peacefully. I would say, in fact, the reason that in many instances that we don't is because of the racists we're discussing right now. The what? The racists that we're discussing right now is many of the instances of why we don't always live in peace. Because of because blacks are racist against whites, you're saying? Well, no, because because of racism in general. No, it's, racism. Not, it's not racism. There's no. It isn't racist it's, to go lynch a black person. 
No, it's evil to lynch well, a black it's person. Well, but it's evil and racist. No, racist it's not racist. Evil. It's not racist. It is racist. No, because they're, they're, out, they're outsiders. Because, because they're black, they were which makes it racist. They're, they're outsiders because, because they're black. It's based upon race. But it's not. It's based on the fact that they are outsiders, and they should. They, they wanted to keep them. Yes, outsiders. but why are they outsiders? Because they're black, therefore they're, making it racist. Well, it's not just because they were black. They were. They were former slaves. They're just a whole. They have a. Why whole were they former culture. slaves, by the way? Because they were for sale. And well, I. <laughs> okay, so I understand that part. Yeah. Uh, even though they shouldn't have been. Um, so. But why would they uh, up for market? Because white people were not sold in that way. It's not the white people's fault that they were not. The but, whites were not for sale. So would we even? I would say, in fact, maybe slavery. And I'm, I, I, you know, I'm going to take a bold position here. I would say slavery might have actually been racist. I, I do want no, to redirect us, just because we have gotten off the gender yeah. topic. Sorry, so. I just, I just had to, you know, I just that was an interesting point he brought up. It was worth. It was definitely worth I, investigating it, but I do want to point us back to genders before we go any further I, with this one. I think this is actually a very good way to get us back to the gender topic because I think it's related to we were talking about transphobia earlier. It yeah. seems like you're averse to ascribing specific labels for actions that you do seem to deem morally reprehensible. You say they're evil, you know, assaulting right. someone on the street because they're black is evil. You know, saying that, uh, you know, uh, punching someone in the face because you find out they're trans is evil. You agree with that, but you seem to disagree with applying a label to that, like transphobic or racist. Yeah, Why is that? partly because, um, let's say liberals have the habit of calling somebody transphobic or homophobic or racist or Islamophobic or sexist. Um, what they're doing when they do that is they're blinding themselves to their own judgment against the alleged racist or sexist or transphobe or whatever. In reality, they are the ones hating the person when in the other, when, and frequently the person being called racist or the person being called transphobic may have perfectly good will towards everybody and they're just telling the truth. Usually they're called racist or transphobic for telling the truth. Sure, um, I, I would disagree. However, um, okay, the word transphobic, what do you think the left thinks it means? The left thinks it means that they hate transgenders or are afraid of them. No, um, okay, so the idea behind transphobia, to put it as simply as possible, is to hold ideas prejudiced towards trans people. Now, this could include anything from, uh, you know, literally seeing them as lesser than you, or behaving in ways that are violent or discriminatory towards trans people, or anything as simple as just denying the validity of their identity, because trans people's identities and the way that, you know, they advocate for their rights is on a, on a different level than that of many other groups, right? Their identity being seen as valid is one of the things they fight for to be done in our society. So the question I have for you is, if all these academic ins institutions view their identity as being valid, and our society is getting progressively more and more pro-trans, and we're starting to recognize, you know, gender and sex being different things, there being more than just two genders, so on and so on, um, and, you know, our academic institutions are all on board, um, I, I guess the question is, you know, what, what's the problem? Well, the academic institutions are not friendly towards Christians or towards normal white Americans, towards men. They're, those are, I mean, they've clearly been subverted and they don't really have the best interests of the transgenders at heart either. It's just, um, in many cases, they have an agenda that's not based in reality. So I would have to ask you, in many instances, academia has actually served a purpose of reinforcing many times uh, white power and authority. When you talk about a lot of race science that happened, uh, a lot of it was built upon the idea of like, how do we justify segregation? How do we justify a lot of these, like I would say, evil things, to use one of your terms. Uh, so I would say that, how could you say that the, the, these institutions are unfriendly or hate the whites? I mean, they do today, it's clearly. Uh, how? Back then, how? Yeah. Um, they pushed the idea that racism is real and that whites are the primary offenders of it. They push um, well, for this diversity. Well, racism is real. We, I mean, we, we don't want to get back into it. But, yeah, but, but, but they, push, they push, um, they push, I mean, they're openly quite anti-Christian. They're openly leftist. They're not for, like, normal, conservative American decent people. So, and, and whites, by and large, are the most conservative group in America, especially men. So there's a lot of academia, and academia that disagrees a lot. 
and there's many academic institutions that are funded by large right-wing uh, individuals so who specifically do this so they can put out pro-Christian ideas and pro many of the, uh, the groups that you just put out there. But it's also not the institution's job to coddle white people or, or Christians or, or right-wingers. The institution's job is to try to seek truth on a specific issue. They're not interested in truth. Well, you're just saying they. It's very broad for us. I'm sure there's certain I mean, are institutions that are, that are bushed that specifically are out there to push an agenda. But you're, you're painting an, an, an entire institution with an extremely broad brush here. And rightly so. Are you not aware that they are largely leftist and that they have been subverted? Leftist? Yeah. So you say the majority of academia believes in, like, what? Owning the means of, like, the workers owning the means of production? Most leftist. of academia probably isn't even interested in those topics. Are you, are you saying that you don't know that the majority of the uh, academia is leftist? Why do you think that is? Because intellectuals tend to fall for lies like that. You said that um, you said that transphobia mm -hmm. has nothing to do with fear. Um, it can be rooted in fear. Why but is the term it called phobia? phobia? Do, do you know what phobia means? Fear. No, it means averse. Oh, interesting. Like hydrophobic. Like right. if, if I took some hydrophobic spray and put it on your shirt and then like put some water on there, it would beat up. Uh -huh. It's not afraid. Like it's not like your shirt is afraid of water. It's it's averse. That's the term. Interesting. Yeah. Um, well, actually, I wanted to bring that up a little bit. So it seems like transphobia is a label from one group that applies to somebody else without their consent. So it seems like the word gay in the 1950s. It was a word that is used in large part to be derogatory to some other group. Now, some people may not use it as derogatory, but as you mentioned, that word could be applied to someone who's super bigoted against the group or just some mild belief that may not be in the benefit of the group. Yeah. And so because that word can be applied to a large spectrum to those who are definitively morally averse in the worldview of the people using the term, uh, it seems like that word is very synonymous to the way gay was used in the 1950s. Some people could use it to be a derogatory term, and many people did, even though it could maybe apply to just more feminine traits. So why is using transphobic to apply to a group who don't want to be labeled with the term any different from uh, people in the 1950s using the term gay to apply to a group that don't want to be labeled with the term. I want to give you a chance to respo respond, Xander, and then we do want to transition into whether or not the left is progressing or regressing. But oh. Sounds uh -huh. good. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I guess I have a question. Do you think that maybe the term transphobic can be an apt label to apply to somebody and can have some level of function and for it to still be wrong to use it incorrectly, to mislabel someone that way. Like for example, if I called Dylan transphobic right now, I think every single progressive person in the room would be like, bullshit, and they'd be right, because that would be an absolutely false way to, to label his identity or, and his politics, right? Um, as for like trying to compare, or, or as for like the comparison you brought up between, I guess you said using gay as an insult back in like the 80s and using transphobic now, um, well, for one, you can't change being gay as far as our institutions are aware. I know you don't trust our institutions, but, but it seems well, why, like why you would can't that matter? Because the point here is that the word gay could well, apply to because there's a very extreme. Big, there's a very big difference between insulting someone for perceived characteristics that are unchangeable and then insulting someone for beliefs they hold. Well, that seems to be subjective to you. Like if someone's insulted because they like Pokemon cards and you're making fun of the fact that they like Pokemon cards, that's still an insult. So you're giving them a derogatory term which they don't accept and you're forcing it on them and it can go from an extreme, which they may or may not apply to, to something very, very narrow, which isn't necessarily derogatory. That seems to be like the same in the case, is that if there's this term that has a broad spectrum use like Nazi, like um, if you call someone a Nazi and you're comparing them to someone who gasses Jews, or the word could be applied to somebody who gasses Jews, but it could also just apply to anybody from Germany, well then this word is not something that is a good thing to use, because if you're just using the word Nazi to apply to any Germans, including those that could gas the Jews, the, since the word seems to imply or be used in the negative connotation to a much greater extent, using it to a German, a German would probably be very offended by this. Be like, but oh, no, 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 I don't mean the Nazis that gas. Yeah, I just mean anybody from Germany. They're not going to accept that. You're, clearly, this word has a huge negative connotation to it. And so applying it to somebody without their consent would seem to be very analogous to using gay in the 1950s. Well, there's nothing wrong with insulting somebody's ideas that they hold. I think that um, in our society, we've kind of become a little bit more accepting of the idea that we probably 
shouldn't shit on people for things that they can't change. Like if you're making fun of somebody for the way they behave, like nobody would have a problem with like if some random asshole ran through that door and started screaming and I yelled fuck you at that guy. No one would have a problem with it. But if I just pointed and yelled fuck you at some random person in the audience who's not doing anything, that would be a problem. There's a pretty big difference between uh, ascribing a label that's typically co like associated with negative feelings towards somebody that's an insult or a label based on what they believe as opposed to how they are, how they were born, what things they can't change about themselves, immutable characteristics per se. Oh, I totally people, agree with that. People generally can't. Well, one sec, one sec. I just want to clarify that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the, the point. point. It's an insult though. That it is clearly an insulting negative term, which is, they, which is the reason they don't want to be labeled with this. And so it, saying that there's this spectrum between the super bad transphobes and the moderate super <laughs> beliefs, superficial beliefs, which may be anti-transphobic, clearly this is an insult. Like that's, as you just mentioned, yeah, this is you're insulting. Yeah. It's not very persuasive either. Um, sure. Uh, I do want to move forward. Okay. I, well, I'll humor you, Hake, because there was a, one particular point you wanted to bring up, and we hadn't gotten to that question. Well, you brought up Im immutable characteristics. Uh, generally, human beings don't really have control over, over what, how they feel, what they do. We don't really have control. And so it's not, I don't believe the, the, the choice versus born that way dichotomy. I think that's a, that's a setup. But I think that if, what it is is, you guys are seeing something wrong with me for seeing something wrong with you. And so you're calling it transphobic. But in reality, I'm just normal. Um, so the fact that you use the term normal to refer to yourself in a political debate is a little bit off-putting. <laughs> because we all have, everybody has different political opinions and nobody's views are normal. Normal is a very relative term. Um, there is no such thing as normal, at least not in, not in the world today. For me, um, we're very abnormal. Wait, but, can I just ask, do you think saying racism doesn't exist is a normal thing to say? Yeah, because normal people are, <laughs> okay. normal people okay. are not, normal people think that what, much of what's called racist is just being normal, being fine. And you're I, normal? Yeah. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Um, well, this right. may be a point to move forward okay. in terms of the second panel topic, namely whether or not the left is progressing or regressing, in particular the Democratic platform in its current state. Someone had asked about whether or not we could discuss that. I'll let you get the ball rolling for that. Okay. So I believe that the when we talk about progressing slash regressing, there is two different things that I usually discuss when it comes to this, when it comes to the Democratic Party. There are two groups, I would like to say. And one group is the vast majority of Democrats and the vast majority of elected Democrats. Their priority has to do with stimulus bills. It has to do with child tax credits. It has to do with uh, marijuana legalization. It has to do with cutting down childhood poverty. It has to do with g protecting gay adoption rights. It has to do with uh, helping repeal the trans panic defense. Uh, it has to do with um, doing stuff like gay marriage, which was a massive achievement for the left in this country. Then you have a second group, and this is the group that people usually say are regressing the country. And this is a group of what I would call college weirdos. And when I talk about college College weirdos is that these, these people on campuses who had really weird ideas about like segregated dorms and weird type of stuff that if you ask the vast majority of the left in this country or the vast majority of Democrats what they think of this stuff it'll be laughed out of the room nobody knows what any of this stuff is nobody really generally cares about these issues when it comes to the vast majority of Democrats and so when we talk about the left progressing or regressing, a lot of times these conversations center specifically on colleges and what happens is on college campuses. And I want to make sure that when we talk about the left in this country, particularly with the, with the Democratic Party, even though some people would disagree calling that the left, but I'll, I'll leave them to their uh, message form, uh, their, their Reddit pages. Um, I would say that this is stuff that has largely been trying to progress the country forward when it comes to infrastructure energy, uh, drug decriminalization, and civil rights for LGBTQ plus people. And we should leave the college weirdos, which have historically always been weird, okay? Everybody on college is weird, including me, okay? They're all weirdos. Uh, college is where you actually see people experiment. It's a time of people growing into themselves, and they're going to mess around with weird ideas. They're going to mess around with, with more radical fringes. This has always historically been the norm on American college campuses. And internationally in the West, college campuses has always been like that. So when we talk about 
whether the left is progressing or regressing in this country. I want to make sure we stick to what the vast majority of Democrats are actually trying to advocate for, the vast majority of elected Democrats are trying to advocate for, and what the Democratic and left-wing base in this country wants, which isn't conversations about, say, segregated housing or even CRT. I, I ask any of you to find me an elected Democrat that is in their platform, like one of my main issues is enforcing critical race theory. That is not a main issue for Democrats. It's a main issue of Republicans strawmanning Democrats. And so I would like to say that I think the left in this country is generally progressing. And we can see that with civil rights accomplishments, uh, gay marriage being the one I've referenced most clearly. Yeah, um, I think just by definition, the left is progressing. I think the left will generally, what we see is the left or our society just getting more and more open-minded, which is sort of how the left-wing political ideas come from. And our society is getting more and more progressive, more and more open-minded. I think that this is sort of like an unstoppable wave that, that's just going to happen. Uh, the left will continue to progress. I don't think anything's going to stop it. I actually don't think Hake and, um, and T-Jump are going to disagree with me here, though. I think the, the right is inherently regressive. And, and that's, I would think you guys would argue it's a good thing, yes? Uh, by regressive, do you mean conservative? Because the point of the right yes. is to make small to, to changes. Bring, to bring us back to a previous point, to well, undo changes made it's by the left. Right? To maintain the status quo and make changes at a smaller rate. It's not regressive, it's saying we still want changes. Like, Republican politicians are still pushing policies to make changes. Like we're still trying to pass bills to do stuff. It's not like we're trying to just just cancel everything. There's clearly progress being made on the right, and many presidents and the right who have passed bills to change things. Clearly, the right isn't trying to just regress. It's trying to make progress, but at a slower rate. It, that's actually surprising me because sometimes I'll talk to conservatives, and they will proudly say, "Yes, the right wants to regress. The right wants to undo all the things the left has done for the last few decades." because they argue the left has corrupted our society in the last few decades and that anything the left has done ought to be undone and that by definition the right is regressive and that's a good thing. Well that would be a comparison between like the rate at which they think society should change is positive but they think the left has gone too positive and so they want to style it back. So it's like if you go too far to the left on the road, yes we want to go back. Does that mean we're being regressive? No, we're just trying to go back to the road. So. They don't want to be regressive in the sense that we're trying to get back to the 1980s, 1950s. We're still trying to make progress, but in a different direction than the left is pushing. So they, yes, we do want infrastructure. That's the thing that Republicans want. Um, we do want good health care, but they think that in many ways the kinds of health care that the left is pushing for is too extreme. So they are, do want progress, just not to the same extent that the lefts are pushing for. So conservative values are to make progress in society, just not to the same level as liberal values. Okay. Since Dylan Burns is more of the policy guy, I'll let him handle anything involving the Democratic Party. But I am curious to know: Do you believe that? Uh, do you believe that the left is regressing? Uh, Policy-wise, in the Democratic Party, no. But I think that the ideology of the left is, in many ways, regressing. Not because of. Uh, their values. I think their values are perfectly fine. Their goals and motives to be better for humanity, to be more inclusive, totally fine. But their argumentation and their epistemology is completely regressive. Like all of the arguments they're using are so overtly fallacious. They're the exact same arguments that we that are that I criticize in the theist movement. So like you brought up the origin of the word gender. Like it's a genetic fallacy. The origin doesn't matter. It's the usage that matters. Um, so if it has a usage that has changed over time, like the word gay as an example, does that mean that because the origin was different that the current usage is wrong? Obviously not. So bringing up the origin of something doesn't make a difference. What if it was, came from a Nazi? What if a Nazi invented helicopters? Does that make helicopters bad? No. Um, so the fact that there's many arguments, like original sin, racism is in everything, racism is inherent, you can't do anything about it, it's exactly the same as original sin in Christianity. Um, there's tons of these fallacies that are used. It was created by bad people, therefore it's bad. It empowers bad people, therefore it must be wrong. Facts are evil, facts are racist. There's all kinds of different fallacies used in left ideology. Well, can I ask you about that one? Facts sure. are evil, facts are racist. Yeah. Do you really think this is something that is perpetuated in large scale on the left, really? In large scale. I mean, it's an argument that's very commonly used. Commonly? Um, yes. Can you name any like major political figure that's well, a I'm not talking about racist. politics here. So again, as I said, from the political standpoint, I don't think the policy thing is regressive. I think the ideology is yeah, a group so like thing. academics, maybe, are you talking about? Like, I'm trying There's to figure many out. many academics. I just want to figure out. Yes. So, so you're talking right. like it's, 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 so it's like the college weirdos that I brought up earlier, basically. No, it's not the college weirdos. It's a large portion 
of the common view of the left right now. And there the are many, there are view. many academics. Well, it's not a have, wait, 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 there are many academics who have literally said that, and there, you can find the quotes if you want. But the point here, I'm not arguing against the Democratic Party or the policy things because I think most of that is fine. But the culture of the ideology of feminism and social justice, many of them intrinsically use fallacies in the basis of their epistemology to take critical race theory. Standpoint epistemology, by definition, is an anecdotal fallacy. It's saying that we should allow the people who experience racism or whatever to define racism. That would be like putting the defendant on the jury. That's clearly this is a bad epistemology. So there are fundamental epistemologies or fundamental fallacies in the epistemology used on the left, which is more the problem. So your statement isn't necessarily that the left, because you're talking about a certain like number of uh, academics who are perpetuating. Well, looking at me like I'm a, like I'm saying. Well, I, so I, the I'm trying to understand what you're saying. That's what I'm trying to get at right now because it sounds like what you're saying is there are a certain amount of people in academia who are pushing an ideology that is regressive in nature while pushing left-wing ideas, which is separate from the actual politicians and policy that I was discussing earlier. Well, there's lots of groups on the left. So the politics thing was not originally in the topic. So I was just talking about the left in general, and there's a large portion of the left who use critical race theory and feminist epistemologies, which have overt fallacies in them. Is this all of them? No. Like, I'm not saying all of the left is regressive. I'm perfectly fine with many of the goals, and politicians are just endorsing it in order to get votes. They don't really take it seriously. Like you mentioned, there's very few politicians who put any of this in their actual policies. But there is a large portion on the left who is adopting these really crappy epistemologies, and that's the part that's being regressive. Okay. I think something, oh, actually, I'll let Hate go first. Sorry. Yeah. Um, We're just going to skip him. <laughs> as far as whether the left is progressing or regressing, I think that may be a false dichotomy, too, because the left is truly, I think, seeking to new lows. Whether, whether whichever side the left, quote unquote, was on during like the Civil War and 600,000 Americans died, that, that was killing people. But now they're like killing souls. They're like support, encouraging the POCs to hate the whites and falsely accuse them of racist when it's not. They, and, and that's mainstream. I mean, they'll, even the rhinos are ousting like Congressman Steve King for just basically supporting America and Western civilization. And then um, they're supporting killing the babies in the womb, which I think is more, and they're in many ways shameless about it, and the most shameless ones are not being condemned, at least not as far as I hear, from the more moderate left that much. And so in many ways, and there's more, more than just that, but I think the college weirdos, as uh, Dylan said, those people are, are influential. They take hold. They take power later on. And so the college weirdos of the 60s are the ones running the show today, and they've just got, got, gotten even worse off the deep end. Nice. Um, yeah, so basically, you brought up Steve King. I forget exactly what happened with him, but I'm pretty sure he said some shit that was uh, a little sus. Um, but, okay. Yeah, he, he said that white supremacy is an offensive term. No, okay, it was, was that it? It was, yeah. a, it was a, yeah, it was a misquote from, it was kind of a sneaky misquote from a New York Times article, but they've been gunning for him for decades. Well, Steve King kind of makes it easy with this history of comments. Like what? Like I just said, white supremacy is an offensive term. He didn't when say that, though. What? The, that's a direct quote from NPR. It's not a direct quote. I just read it. I literally is, looked it up because I was remembering it. Is or is not? Is. is I can bring it up again if you want me to read it directly for you. White me. supremacy is an offensive term? We bring it up again. Because there's no, like, that's a meaningless statement. Like, on what, on what, in what way? It's a slur against whites frequently. A lot yeah. of suspense here to find out if Steve King is racist. <laughs> it's no such thing. <laughs> what, um, while, while Dylan looks for that, because uh, I mean, I, we might as well, I, yeah. something I want to say is <clears throat> I think a huge problem that conservatives have with people on the left is that, uh, or I think this is just a, a problem generally, your politics oh. don't necessarily. Sorry, inform. it was actually worse. I misread it. 
He said, why are white nationalists and white supremacists uh, uh, offensive? Why are these things bad? Right, because that's not even, that's not even what he that's said. That's worse. That was, that was from the New York Times. It was a misquote. No, that's him. No, he wrote saying, the article. He said, "How is it a misquote?" He, he wrote the article. the article. Yes, it is. No, he did not write. He the wondered article. out loud to the New York Times. Yeah, New York why, Times. He want, so why, so he, he was saying, with the Western, New York Times reporter no, saying, "Like, why is white supremacy so bad? Why is this so like? Why are these things so?" That's not what he said. What, I'm shocked that you even believe that he actually said that. I'm reading it right now. Because yes. he said Western civilization. That was and the third the thing. way that it was lumped wait, in wait, wait, with white so, supremacy. Let me read the actual quote. Yeah. The actual quote is white nationalists, white supremacists, Western civilization. How did that language become offensive? End of quote. Yeah, so he's, he's talking about how it got lumped in with Western civilization. White nationalists. That stuff got lumped. White supremacists. He said that stuff got lumped in with being for Western civilization because the... You're the giving one of the most charitable interpretations no, that's I've ever the seen more, you give to a no, politician. No, that's the most accurate interpretation. It's not an accurate yes, interpretation. Yes, it is. Because you're... <laughs> this is so ridiculous. Yeah. I can't believe you're falling for it. But then again, all the rhinos fell for it too. I guess they just didn't want him in office because he was for... So you think the America. Republicans decided... You think that he was for white supremacy? Do I think Steve King? Yes, I do. You think he's Steve openly? King. You think he would tell the New York Times, "I'm for white supremacy." I think Steve King is not the brightest bulb. You think that he would tell the New York Times he's for so-called white supremacy? I think he was dog whistling and he whistled too hard. <laughs> it's ridiculous, man. He was. People yeah, say that. People say that Western. Morning. People say that Western civilization. Be clear. Is no, hold on. Let me finish. People say that Western civilization is a white supremacist dog whistle. That's why, it, that's why the words got all lumped together like that. The problem is, what gets me so about they, this... So they may have quoted him, but that's not what his so meaning was. What gets me about this is the Republican Party got in the trenches to defend Lauren Boebert. They got in the trenches even to try to save Major Marjorie Taylor Greene, the Jewish space laser lady. But they didn't do it for Steve King, which shows just how different and how reprehensible Steve King was in particular when Marjorie Taylor Greene was able to pass by, even though we saw those Facebook comments, which looked like endorsements of threats on politicians. And she still got by when it came to the Republicans, but this guy didn't. This guy was a different animal. It's a totally different situation. He's been in Congress for years. He's a man. Yeah, so he has, it's even worse. Than. No, it's not. Because that shows that no, he was kissing, established. Even with women, established ties, new. he wasn't able to avoid being removed. They kiss up to women. She's new. So you she's, think the Republicans... She's sort of popular and hot right now. So they're not going to do anything to her. If maybe that years down the, ride, the road, they will get rid of her. What, but what benefit him, is Marjorie Taylor Greene serving the Republican Party? I've looked at her like a bill. Pop popularity. popularity. I, I think That's there's some really popularity. It. Yeah. Just and right now, he's not, he was kind of on his way out in terms of popularity because they kind of subverted the, the demographics of his area. And, you know, he was... He was Subver against, wait, subverted the demographics of his area. What do you mean by that? Meaning, like, he, he grew up... Like, he brought English only to Iowa, I think. And it was a primarily white area. And then it's, it's so gotten who more who subverted the, the who subverted it? Uh, generally, the, the country, like, ever since the 1965s. So the country, generation. like, subverted the area, or did it just naturally evolve? It's, I mean, the 1965 Immigration Act isn't natural. You can't just say it's just natural. You mean immigration pop? Well, the thing is, you say they subverted his demographics as if it was like this notorious, like this nefarious action. When I think it was just people moved there of a different demographic. They looked at Steve King and him putting out comments like this, and they were like, probably not my guy. The 1965 Immigration Act was subversion, whether you think that it's subversion natural after that or not. What's that? What do you mean subversion? Like subvert, like they were, they, said, the they said the immigration that was primarily from European and Christian countries was a racist thing. We need to bring in all different races, well, all different countries. Wait, well, that's not what they said. What they said was prioritizing Western or white immigration over other forms of immigration is racist. Now, I don't think I could ever make you think racism is real in the first place, so I don't know why I'm trying. But they're saying that, and that would be racist if I was to say, yeah, we're just going to accept or we're only, we're going to prioritize immigrants from this continent instead of other continents. And that's what a country has a right to do. But if I was to say, I'm going to accept the white immigrants, but not the other immigrants, wouldn't that be racist? Well, you don't believe racism is racist, I mean, so why am I trying? That would be normal. That would be, it would be normal to only accept the whites. Yeah, if you want to call that racist, if you think racism is a good thing, I suppose so. What's normal mean? Normal means countries uh, preserving their, na their nation as their, their nation, rather than becoming 
So you think that's diverse. So you think in say a majority black nation, if they yeah. had a a uh, immigration rule that um, that didn't allow a lot of white or Hispanic people in, or people from any other uh, ethnic group, right? And they only let people uh, into that country, you'd say that that was normal. Yeah. Okay. So you're you're basing it on a subjective idea of how many people in a particular nation are a majority of a certain group. You could call it subjective, or a certain but it's like reality being brought in. Okay. Yeah. So what is normal is however, whichever thing there is more of in a given space. No, I'm saying what's normal is it for people to want to be amongst one another. So when I said that, that what's frequently called racist is, is, is something that's normal behavior, traditional people, no matter where they're from, want their children to marry the same race. Okay. So that's something that's normal. So what you're talking about right now is is what we on the left would either call implicit bias or just basic like uh, tribalism, right? The idea that humans tend to sort of like uh, draw lines in the sand between each other, start fights, but you know, sort of like Not that fights. kind of thing happens. There mm -hmm. are conflicts and whatnot. Right. I think that on the left we would call it. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm blanking on the word for it right now. Um, we would call it. Uh, 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 there's a term for it. It's. Uh, I'm actually brain farting on the word right now. It's a it's a type of race. It's got racism attached, it? no, no, no. attached to it. No, no, no. It's got racism attached to it. It means that it's not active. It's sort of uh, in the back of your mind. Prejudice. Prejudice. Yeah, some sort of implicit bias, right? Um, I don't think that's necessarily. I, I think you're making a broad judgment of the left's tendency to use a word like race because you don't believe racism exists. You think that when you see the left mislabel somebody with that, I feel like you're bringing that, you're, you're sort of extrapolating to that to racist, racism doesn't exist because the left is so crazy about their using the label. Do you, is that where this is coming from? Because It's I part of like it. It's a, it's, a, it's a pretense that it's some wrong thing frequently because most of the time when somebody is called racist, they're called racist for saying something true or being right. I wonder why you think that. Something that they have the right to do. What do you mean have the right to do, or that they're right? To, to right to do or say. Like um, Donald Sterling, when he, he was the owner of the Clippers, he didn't want his lady friend V. Stibiano to hang out with, the, with uh, black guys because it looked like it, it was embarrassing to him. That's something that he has the right to do. She recorded it secretly and gave it to like TMZ. And, that was, and then this whole racism witch hunt. They took his team away from him, fined him all these find him all this money, and maybe, maybe they paid his, him for the team, but it was a big witch hunt over something that he has a right, he, he has a right to have that, uh, ask that request of that female friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I don't think that he doesn't have that right, but doesn't everybody else in America have the right to judge him for what he said? Honestly, I don't think that they, sh they have that right to judge him for it. I mean, they, they will. And you can't stop it. And he, I guess he should be wiser than that. But I mean, you're, you're not supposed to secretly record people in California. But um, well, how, is that, how is his right to judge her any different from everyone else's right to judge him? Because he's making a request based on their relationship. And so he's not even necessarily judging her. He, or even like Magic Johnson or whoever he was, she was hanging out with. He's expressing a preference. And isn't that what everyone else, else is doing, is expressing a preference towards his opinion? But they don't, they're, it's not even their business, you know what I mean? Like, it's, he has his business with her, but they didn't even know about this, and now that they know about it, they want to have a witch hunt against him. Are you only allowed to have opinions on things that are your business? I think that you should mind your business, yeah. So does that mean that you shouldn't have an opinion on, like, anybody else's position on this debate? Um... But when they make it, when they, this is public politics, so it's a little bit different. So they have their right to their opinion. I wouldn't want them fired for uh, believing that racism exists and stuff like that. Um, these people wanted his team taken away from him. They wanted him fired. I guess they can be mad at him because you can't stop people from being mad. But it's truly his business, you know what I mean? So you're, it's, it was wrong that she illegally recorded him, even though it was technically their conversation, so she kind of allowed to do that. But In California, it has to be both people consent. I don't know about the law, yeah. but the fact that it was brought public, like people do have a right to 
be angry at him, as you said. Like, they have a right to form an opinion. I don't think that there's a right to be angry. They, they can have an opinion, but they shouldn't take his team away from him. He was, you know what I mean? Well, seems ridiculous. Oh, we're ready for the Q&A? So two minutes? Two minutes. Two minutes? Okay. I guess here's, here's a, a comparison that I'll make, because I guess it's somewhat analogous. Um, let's say you had a friend, you know, just a friend of yours, you hang out and whatnot. Um, and one day, your friend, like you're on the phone, leaves the phone on, all right? Forgets to hang up on you yeah. after the call. And you hear that person say, ah, oh, I hate him. So, oh, fuck him. Oh, I can't believe I'm friends with this guy. No, even though you weren't supposed to hear that, wouldn't you come out of that thinking, ah, oh, well, fuck that guy, you know? Like, wouldn't you judge them a little bit, even though you kind of heard them say something that you weren't supposed to hear? It would definitely be a temptation, but there's like a Bible passage that says, don't pay too much attention to when you're, the curses that your servant may say against you, because you know very well that you've cursed others in your heart. So have some grace for people. In general, people have, sometimes may express some hatred toward people even when they are friends with them. So you don't, you don't have to um, take it so personally. And we've seen there's a huge, nasty, evil division where the left hates the right, the right hates the left. Uh, there's this whole witch hunting against, against racists and sexists. You can, if, if I were to call a black man the N-word, nothing is gonna happen to the black man, but I could lose my job. So people are being called, people who are getting called racist or rapists or me too, they're losing their livelihoods. And many, and many times it's quite unfair. I mean, yeah, but I could, make, I could say the same thing, right? Like a black person in sundown town overnight might get like attacked and you, get, you might get canceled if you say the N word, right? Like tons of people get shit if they do a certain thing in our society. I guess the, the main question is why aren't we allowed broadly as a society to uh, morally judge somebody when something is made public about them that previously wasn't known. Like, uh, I guess, uh, uh, Epstein, for example, do you think that it's bad for the public to judge Epstein after what he did became public? I don't know what all Epstein did. Um, Bad stuff. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the law should deal with him, and the rest of us, we can have, we can have some opinions about it, but in general, if he, if he violated the law, then... Yeah, he should go to jail. For the record, I want to take the anti-Epstein position. <laughs> uh, I, and before we go to Q&A, there's one last thing I want to hit on, because uh, we were talking about the agenda earlier, and I want to just pivot back to that for this before Q&A. So I work a lot in my local city politics uh, and in Maryland politics. That's my primary job, streaming and this online stuff is secondary. And I've been to a lot of city meetings recently. And the annual city budget for my city is $21 million, right? That is a decent sum of, sum of money. And we use that to repair drainage systems. We use that for speed bumps, for, uh, for city events, for, for programs to rebuild uh, tr uh, trees and green space, which is a big priority for me on the environmental board. Biden's stimulus bill, which he did to rebuild this country, gave our city access to 22 million more dollars. 22 million more than an entire year of our city's budget. And the impact that that is going to have on our city when it comes to rebuilding drainage systems, when it comes to rebuilding green space that we have been losing, when it comes to improving safety measures in our community, when it comes to after school programs is massive. And he gave it to localities. And it has been showed by Harvard economists time and time and time and time again that when you give money to localities, they know how to re, uh, rejuvenate the economy much better than the federal government does directly. And this is something that he isn't able to take as much credit for because he's not directly implementing all of the spending, but he was the one who helped make the funding available to our city. And that is something I will always be thankful for the Joe Biden administration for doing for my city. And that is something that I want to highlight here when we talk about whether the Democratic Party is regressing or the left is regressing or progressing. That is the implementation of, of decades of economic research into a decent stimulus package, which has helped rebound our economy. And that's something I'm very thankful for. Excellent. Thank you very much. And we will jump into the Q&A, folks. So if you happen to have a question, same thing as last time, where we'll have one line coming down the middle toward the mic, and then in the middle aisle as well, one line going back. Hi. Um, 
I just have a simple question for James. So this is very much in the beginning of the debate. You said, oh, can you hear me? Okay, I'll start over. Um, this is a question to James. Um, very early in the debate, you said that um, because like we're pushing trans um, like the trans agenda because the society is developing a more female mind. Um, my question, my two questions are: What is wrong with the female mind, and how can you comment about gender when you only respect the male gender? Well, first of all, women need love and guidance, not so much respect. What is wrong with love and guidance? They need love and guidance. What, no, there's what is nothing wrong. wrong. With it? There's nothing wrong with love and guidance. Okay then. Yeah, they need love and guidance. They don't so much need respect. Um, they don't need respect. Right. They don't need respect. Yeah, because men. What? Because <laughs> what, what's happening is men are openly being disrespected in America. And so it's, so it's like the roles have reversed. It's because what, a, like a woman should respect her husband and the man should love his wife. So um, what was your question? What was your My first question, question is, is like... Oh, a female mind. Yeah, what's, what's wrong, wrong with, with female, female mind? mind? It, it frequently will listen to Satan. It'll be illogical. <laughs> Like, um, yes, a woman is more. Oh, a, a, a woman is more emotional, uh, frequently more intellectual, and by intellectual I mean getting into your mind and like what I said about liberalism, leftism, rationalizing evil, where um, you you turn gay into being okay, you turn the transgender into being something that you should really support, when in reality you should just be you should be decent to all people. Okay, so but, if you, if you do you believe that women are, are like inherently evil because they live in the Satan? Okay, so why aren't you even commenting on gender if you only respect the male gender then? No, I mean, I respect like the female this, gender, but the female gender should be... It doesn't be sound very respectful. That you said. Well, the, the women should... Um, women should really be quiet about politics. They should, <laughs> they, okay, then. I guess I'm done here. No, no, you don't have to be done. <laughs> What do you mean, Hank? <laughs> you just won. You, you got your goal, right? You're the normal one. Uh, uh, sorry, completely different topic. Um, I was just thinking about, it just kind of struck me, uh, James, talking about the uh, NBA owner with the racist stuff yeah, he said and all this. Sterling. Yeah, so my, well, the thing that bothered me was when I heard you say a couple times, like, they took his team away. Like, who's they? My understanding is the yeah. league felt embarrassed by this guy. The other owners of the team were embarrassed by this guy. Right. So they took action against him because they're embarrassed of what he did. That's private, I mean, uh, what do you call free market or ca capitalism, if you will? Like, whatever. I mean, I don't see the problem. Where, where, where's the problem in that? It's phony because it's just appeasing the mob. When you saw Adam Silver, well, who's the, the... owners of the team? Is that the mob? The mob no, no, the they, they were... The I mean, the owners... I don't know that they cared that much. They, they were, I don't think that they cared, I except for the course. people were forming a, the, the useful idiots were all upset about this white racist, and he's not a normal white person. Uh, this white racist guy who said this evil thing in private with his girlfriend or whatever she was. So it's, it's appeasement, it's a mob mentality. It's, it's a bandwagoning thing. So they do it. But can't I mean, you have an opinion? I mean, if somebody says something terribly racist, I'm going to think, that, that's a terribly racist thing. I have less right. respect for this person. Can, and if they're representing an organization, I'm going to think less of that organization now. Now the value's gone down. You've got to get rid of this guy if you want to bring the value of your team back up. What's a team supposed to do? Just keep going until there's yeah, little sponsors team, huh? and players boycott? I was just Googling, like, players were starting to boycott the playoffs or something. Right. And I, I don't know if that happened or whatever. But, I haven't but, done one of these since I mean, high school. Isn't that a reason like for him it to be is, it is removed a reason, if the majority of the owners of the team what we, or whatever what we want is to unbrainwash the, the, the blacks on the team who are all upset about this because it had nothing to do with them. All right. You know what I mean? Okay. So we want to fix society, not, not right. lynch the guy. All right, thanks. Yeah. Let's not talk about lynching again. That's a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, progress and gay marriage were brought up multiple times. Do you think we should keep progressing to the point of allowing ancestral relationships? For instance, two consenting gay brothers, they can't reproduce, so why not just allow it? Um, that is the, the notorious incest question. I'm glad that you brought it up. Um, yeah, I think that the incest topic, when there isn't a possibility of, like, 
abuse or of a child with any type of like uh, uh, any child period being born, once you start to cut away all of the possible bad outcomes that can happen from an incestuous relationship, you have a hard time finding like factual moral arguments against it on like a very fundamental level. I, I highly recommend like thinking about it for a little while. It's interesting. Um, as for legality, I would probably still side against the idea of making all incestuous uh, relationships, or even specific incestuous relationships, uh, legal, probably. Like two brothers, right? Yeah, even like two gay brothers that met each other in college and don't have any like prior experience with each other that could lead to any type of power imbalance. They're twins, they're the same age, all that, yeah. No, they've known each other yeah. since birth. They've, they've known each other since, well, they then you'd really have the, well, now you'd have the argument that there'd be some sort of uh, uh, mental issue with that, right? Because they knew each other as siblings, I don't know. It's it's okay. really weird. It's a weird question, but I'd probably go with the no. Let's not. I'd say that should be legal. I don't see any problem with that. Well, do you know why uh, uh, reverse cowgirl is illegal where I come from? No. It's illegal to turn your back on family. <laughs> where do you come from? Florida. Florida. Yeah. Uh, around the home assassin. You're looking area. at me like I'm, I, you're, you're, you're looking at me like I'm going to answer the question. <laughs> No, oh. I want to run for public <laughs> office. Freedom. You are so booked today. Um, thank thing. you, everybody. You all did amazing. Um, Alexander, you previously said that you believe that there can be an infinite amount of genders, right? Um, that can also be seen as like there really isn't any meaningful interpretation of gender and therefore it would lead to gender abolition. For everyone on the panel, what is, what is your thoughts on gender abolition? Um, well, personally, I think it's inevitable. I think that uh, there are a lot of things that we can't change that are just going to happen as our society progresses, whether or not I'm in favor of it or not. Generally, I think our, our social, our ideas on a social level in our society have been continuously getting better. I don't really see any areas where our society has gotten like worse on a social level. Um, and I think it, it'll, it, it'll probably happen. And I think it'll probably be a good thing. I think it'll open up more avenues through which individuals can express themselves outside of broad umbrella terms that apply to so many people. You know? we, should, we should definitely get back to just man and woman, boy and girl. I think language is ambiguous and the usage can be anything in any society. So all language has infinitely many ways you can use it. And I think that it isn't a good thing or a bad thing that words are adopted or changed over time. It's just however people tend to use the words. So it's a good thing if that's how people choose to use it in the future. Uh, I don't really know much about gender abolition. I don't know enough about neo-pronouns either. A lot of uh, the more niche stuff. But what I will say is I personally identify very much with being a man, and the idea of being addressed as anything else besides a man is very uncomfortable for me. That's probably just because of how I've been socialized, prob uh, most likely. But I would say for, for me, I, I would not like that, but it, it's large part probably because of how I was raised. Gotcha. And then just if I can ask a follow-up question, yes. Um, for Alexander, so just to be safe, because it would be, uh, you have so many questions. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. You can ask me off stream. Yeah, I'll say okay. um, This question is for everybody on the panel. Um, how should the government, or how do you think the government should um, deal with trans rights? Um, should they keep it as kind of like a cultural um, decision, how trans people are treated, or should there be like trans rights, or should the government be hands off? Um, I guess I'll start because I, I am more familiar with this particular topic. I think that the government absolutely should be, and not enforcing necessarily in, in the way that you would think, but um, in some way supporting trans rights. Like for example, including gender identity broadly as being a protected class. So um, just in general, people can't deny you service for a, you know at a business or uh, if you're trying to buy or rent a place, they can't say no because you're trans or because you're a man or because you're a woman or anything like that. Uh, I think that's good. I think when it comes to trans health care, that's probably where the government is going to have the, the biggest responsibility. I think that expanding the ability for trans people to get their hands on hormones, hormone blockers, surgeries, or even just access to a, um, a, a, a you know, medical professional that knows what they're doing and can help them uh, uh, you know, go about transitioning in the most safe and healthy way possible, I think, that, um, yeah, I think that's something that the government's going to have to take care of. Yeah, I would totally agree. I think that 
uh, they every human should have the same rights and so for medical rights as he mentioned that should be a totally a definitely thing that the government should do to provide medical care for trans people just like everybody else so yeah i think that we should apply trans rights as we do to everyone else's rights and yes they should be a protected class you shouldn't be able to kick someone out because of their identity so yeah i'd say for sure I, I work at Free State. Um, I'm on the board for Free State. It's the Maryland LGBTQ plus civil rights organization. Uh, the organization was deeply involved in trying to repeal the trans panic defense in Maryland. Uh, it's going to be involved in this next session in the Is Inclusive Schools Act. I believe in providing uh, trans people with, with affordable health care options. And I believe that they should be treated just like any other human being. <laughs> And uh, I, I think fundamentally, if you were to sit most Americans down and ask them, do you believe trans people should be treated like decent human beings, the vast majority of people would agree with that. Uh, I think there's a lot of uh, dialogue in between, those, uh, in, in between that, but I think that most people would agree with that, and I'm with that as well. I don't trust anything generally that the federal government does with regard to people. I think we should get rid of anti-discrimination laws generally, because it just is a setup for division and nastiness and I mean, the corruption of these, uh, the federal police is bad. And as far as health care goes, I think that they should get the same normal person care uh, that other people get. But they shouldn't be um, like in prisons. And I don't think that they should be in the military. I think Trump was, was right on that. Um, they shouldn't, but much less should they be getting the transition uh, so-called health care, because I don't think that's benefit, truly benefiting them. Cool. Can I ask you about that? You said normal person care. So the vast majority of people don't have uh, rare diseases, scoliosis, Alzheimer's. And so I guess you would say that wouldn't be normal person care. What, what's normal person care? But I don't mean normal in care? that sense. I mean normal is, as in right and wrong normal. Right and wrong normal. Yeah. So like they, if they get scoliosis or if they have some type of strange disease, uh, obviously the doctor does no harm, but I think the trans uh, supportive so-called health care mm -hmm. is doing harm. Yeah, well, but it's been shown again uh, time and time again. And I don't buy any respect. Well, I mean, of course you don't, yeah. but it's been shown time, I'm saying this mostly for the audience, time and time again it's been shown by multiple medical institutions that providing gender affirming care helps the, the mental health outcomes of trans people. Anti-bullying programs in, in public schools helps the mental health outcomes of trans people, LGBTQ plus people, and this is a surprising outcome, straight kids as well. Anti-bullying programs centered on LGBTQ plus rights actually helps the mental health of straight kids as well. And so when you say that, what's right or wrong, I would say making less people kill themselves is probably the, uh, the right thing to do. I know, but there's another way to do right, because what you're doing is addressing symptoms with another wrong thing. Because, yes, that, that, may, that may help in this way, but there's another way to help them prevent from, from suicide and prevent the, the bullying thing is What's such that? a scam. I do want to get, I'll, I'll let you okay. answer Dylan's question, but then we've got to move on to the next question. Yeah, from yeah. so like the, with, with regard to bullying, for example, um, we need a return to like strength rather because the because the the bullies are weak and the bullied are weak and so we're just weakening and enabling that weakness of society so yes you're solving s some problems short term and maybe even quote unquote long term but at what cost there's a lot of there's a lot of feminization of society that's going on with this very strong I actually agree with Hake I think there's way too much too much female thinking um, in our just society. Real quick, uh, <laughs> piggybacking off the last question, um, you talk about normalcy, but it seems like you're kind of abnormal in your beliefs. So when you say normalcy of right and wrong, what do you mean by that? So like, yeah, normal. By normal, I don't mean typical. I mean normal as in like, as God would have it. What people would normally be if they had a good upbringing and they were moral people. So That's it. You could, you could say that, but, but I don't mean normal as in typical, what you see nowadays. I want, like... Okay, so you want normal. I got you. Right, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Hi. Um, first of all, I'd, I'd like to apologize for uh, not having been here for the, the whole panel. I've only been here for, like, the end of it and just this Q&A. Um, so uh, I am a Christian who believes that there are two genders corresponding to binary uh, uh, sex difference of male and female, which, in case anybody's curious, is something that Jesus himself actually affirms in Matthew chapter 19. 
But my question for Haik um, is, you speak of, <laughs> you speak of how the female mind listens more to Satan when when Eve presented the fruit to her husband Adam, he ate of it just the same. And when the Lord confronted them, Eve honestly said, the serpent deceived me and I ate, whereas Adam said, you gave me the woman. Right. So, <laughs> so... Men do not listen to women. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. What? You got him there. You said that... So, Paul, the New Testament writer who is often considered to be misogynistic, speaks of women prophesying and serving in the, 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 the weekly gathering. And you're, you're in Christ, whom, in whom there is no male and female, you talk about how not only that there's a difference between men and women, but they should be treated drastically differently. Um, and, and, and that one should not... I mean, are you really seriously saying that Ephesians chapter 5 is saying that women should not be respected? Does, not, does love not include respect? Anyways... Um, sorry, that's kind of a side question. But then, other than that, you then speak of ethnocentrism as something that should be considered normal when in Christ there is neither Jew nor Gentile. In Christ there is also neither slave nor free. My question for you primarily is who you are, first and foremost, your identity is a Christian, right? As it, sh as it should be if you consider yourself one. Um, then your primary obligation is to preach the gospel. In what possible world do you consider yourself as drawing anyone in this room closer to Christ, who is the truth, knowing whom would set them free? So you brought up Paul. Um, I wanted to say, I don't know what Paul said about women speaking, but I know that he said that he does not permit a woman to speak in church and that um, she should ask her husband and she should not lead. So there's definitely a difference between men and women here on earth. And also here on earth, we have societies. And when we have differences between each other, it's been proven that um, when there's physical differences between people, that's a temptation to say, oh, he's just treating me this way because he's white, he's racist. When in reality, that's not always the case. So it, it breeds division. And like, so it, a, a nation is generally, diversity is not, diverse, the kingdom of heaven is, diverse as God has it, but the kingdom of Satan, which is the world, is also diverse, but that's a false version of love, and that's what the left is pushing. So, I guess that this could, anybody could take Just this. a bit closer to the oh, mic. Sorry. I guess I, anybody could take this, but I, as primarily to T-Jump, I just had a question about, because you had talked about uh, progressivism and just about how you'd say that both parties are basically moving toward progressing society. And in the past, uh, things that we would oppose today, like prohibition and eugenics, were considered progressive, at least by some in America. So my question is, what would you define to be progressive? Um, Higher quality of life standards for everybody in the society. I agree with that. Generally, yeah, that's a pretty that's a pretty accurate definition. I'd say just generally trying to maximize freedom for as many people as possible to maximize happiness. In general, when I hear people say progressive, I think like basically just borderline communist. So, so the question was was how would you define progress in a society? But he said progress. Okay, progressive. That must have been. <laughs> how would I define progress in a society? Like, I guess my question is, for example, with something like eugenics, why would you say eugenics is not progressive? Lower quality of life standards for people in the society? Because they're killing them? Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. I guess I'm just saying that, like, the, the, that, the higher quality of life standards was the, the goal, expressed goal of eugenics. So, uh, yeah, it it's misguided frequently. The idea of progress is frequently misguided, and it, as it is today. Yeah. It was back then, and it is today. Yeah, so I believe in moral progress, so I think that's not really a thing that most societies move towards when they're trying to gain progress, and it's not really a platform of the Republican Party. We're not really, they're not really advocating for eugenics today, thankfully. Okay. Wait, uh, so if you define, like, progress, I can't do this, I'm just going to get in line. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> so this is our last question we can do, and we've got to wrap up, just to get people off at lunch. I got that.
Not, not bad. I'm feeling good. Good, good. My question for you uh, is for Hake. Um, you state that um, you do not believe racism um, actually is a thing in this country, nor do you believe in systemic racism. I remember you had a debate against Ifrid uh, where you stated that, um, that even slavery, uh, the slaves actually liked it. Remember you said that? You said they enjoyed being the slaves and they were okay and happy with it. They did not. Um, in this country, I mean, we had slavery, we had the Fugitive, the Fugitive Slave Act, we had the Indi Indian Removal Act, we had black codes, we had uh, convict lease system, we had Page Act of 1875, Scott Act, Benedict Law Act, we had Gary Act, we had Jim Crow laws, Days laws, we have all these acts and laws that are basically holding people of color uh, down. And, and, th and these laws are actually still <laughs> happening today, um, even with the, the justice system. When you see these things, okay, and you see it clear, okay, how can you say that there is no such thing as systemic racism when you actually see a, a certain sect of people, mainly black people, that are being affected by these laws? How can you say that there's no such thing as systemic racism or things like that when it affects specifically black people? Present day, I see, um, I see blacks suffering as a result of black crime. And there is a lot of pandering to blacks, which is also a disservice to them. Um, calling, this, calling this and that racist, feeding, feeding them the constant um, suspicion of, of racism is putting their mind on the white people when they should be looking within at their own uh, their own hatred of their own hearts, and that's a total disservice to them. All right. So when you see uh, things like uh, in the justice system, uh, yeah. I'm not going to harp on murders or police or lynchings or things like this. I'm going to talk about that. Let's say in the justice system, things that actually happen today. If I get caught with, let's say, a pound of weed. You get caught with a pound of weed. Who gets the most time? I, from what I understand, typically you would get the most time. Why is that? I don't know exactly, but there's a lot of there's a lot of reasons. Oftentimes there's oftentimes there's more we crimes. Live in the same, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, brother. I, okay. want, to, I want to cut you off. If we live in Dallas, I'm here. Mm -hmm. Literally, if we live here, I get caught with a pound. You get caught with a pound. Why do I go to jail for twenty? You probably go to jail for five. Sometimes there is priors, or there are. I know, but I, but I don't. This is a theoretical situation, so we don't really know that, what the truth is, of it is. Oftentimes, there's plea deals. They plead down. They've committed other crimes that they they plead down for a lesser crime, and then still they get the harder time. So there's there's a whole lot of stuff going on, and honestly, the justice system is turning. Yes, the justice system is corrupt, and it does it does burn a lot of people. And it's also turning towards burning more whites now, especially with the federal government, because there's, there's this anti-racism push. Do, do you think that there are burning? Uh, this is my last point here. Do you think that it's are, they're, they're actually uh, being kind of equal to whites now that, that, that because they are quote unquote burning no. whites now because they're being actually equal? No, because it's an anti-racist push. Like when, when there's a thing, for example, George Zimmerman. George Zimmerman was not going to be charged, but because of the mob mentality, the, the negative press, he was charged. Right, but it was, it was all evidence showed self-defense, and they had to assume self-defense. No prosecutor could have, so, yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Any other final questions? Uh, just with the progressive thing, sorry. Um, if Mike. you find progressive is that, like, is anybody saying progressive? Just so they can hear you in the mic. Oh, yeah, sorry. And that's the final one for sure. If you, if you define progressive as just like raising the quality of standards, doesn't like pretty much every ideology wants to raise like the quality of life? In my opinion, I thought progressive was more like kind of like challenging the anti, like challenging the establishment type of, anti-foundational type of thing. Every, nobody believes that they're pushing for evil. Nobody believes that they're in the wrong. Nobody believes that they're pushing for something that's going to cause harm to the world. Nobody on this planet believes they personally are doing that. Um, I'd say that progressivism to, to I'll, I'll add one extra word on here to make the definition a little more succinct. Progressivism seeks to maximize human freedom in order to maximize possible human happiness. I think it's a good way to, to word it. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you.
Thank you very much, folks. We are going to let you go to lunch, and then we'll be back for more debates. Appreciate it, and thanks most of all to the speakers. Fantastic. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you. It was a fun time.